Hello everyone. So this is another um, tutorial for the Cherry Blossom Watercolor Challenge. And on this one, we're gonna take one of the sample inspirational papers that were in some of the subscription packages. And if you're just catching in, there are two other videos or three other videos already on the channel. And they are showing off what's inside the Cherry Blossom package. Uh, everybody got a different one of these subscription papers and these are just inspirational pages so that you maybe get some fresh ideas as well as the actual challenge cards which is a swatch card with a practice there is instructions on how to draw which i went over in the last video and also um, paper and ways to draw this and i painted this one in the last one too and gave you some lessons there's also a value card i'm going to take the arches paper and we're going to do a little mini version of this because I think this is really fun. So in the last um, challenge, I was actually using this for my uh, watercolors and I'm going to just do something crazy before I clean this out. I'm just going to mix some water into it and I'm going to show you how much fun you're allowed to have with a watercolor so that you don't drive yourself nuts. So I'm cleaning this out, part of the dirty palette challenge. If you guys have been following my channel for a while, we do all kinds of fun, crazy things. And I'm going to take this beautiful color and I'm going to one just kind of figure out where I want my drawing to be in this nice little loose color here and then we're going to use it as the pink sky color <laughs> just like that so that was just like a mix the dirty mix of my colors so I kind of just have a little bit of an outline here for my branches and that just kind of mentally got it into that area and then I used it as my dirty sky color I'm going to mix a little bit of the shadow color in here, the more mauve color, and we're going to start developing out some background mountains. Now this is still really wet, right? So we would need to wait for each layer to dry, but I'm never a patient person. So if you want a smoother background, wait for it to dry and then add it. I'm just going to kind of give myself some space here. I'm going to take the side of my brush and I'm just going to swipe it down in these little dry areas and connect to them. See how I did that? So swipe and connect. And then let it be dry brushy. I feel like my um, my light is so bright. There we go. So you see how I'm getting kind of like a peachy look, but to see how I did this. So now I'm going to take a little more of that shadow color and I'm just going to brush it into the wet areas just like that. And then underneath, and that's just to give me like that ridge. I'm going to clean my brush off and wipe it in my little brush thing here and blend it out into the arches. Now here I'm kind of giving it a light wash, but not a lot. And same here, keeping it kind of going in that same direction. See what I mean? So this is kind of like it blends a little bit here because and I like that actually. I think that that looks really nice because it gives that kind of appearance in the background. In fact, we can re-wet 
some areas and let it blend and just get kind of modeled and not be really afraid of it and see how I broke it apart there kind of like break it apart you can add it back in you can if you don't like it you can dry it get the color back on your brush and do another dry brush effect you can partially dry it you can go back in and add color in as it's drying so sky's the limit and I want you to see all this because I'm literally showing you many many different ways that you can manipulate this and make it really rough and loose and you can even wait till this area dries and if you don't like that you can put in some more style lines you know what I mean of the color and if it's bleeding you can just clean it up before it dries so there's a lot of things you can do here um, I don't love things in the background to be too dark so I'm just gonna Kind of erase some of this because I still have more layers to go in the front so now I'm going to let's just take some blue and mix it in here and see what we get that's kind of a neat mauve color I like that so maybe add a little bit more of the sky blue mm-hmm very nice again keeping everything kind of going in this one direction I should like that little white area so I'm gonna leave it my watercolors I don't know what it is about me I just have this thing for watercolors that I can correct <laughs> as pretty as they are I can always seem to swipe them away or correct them so this is my little area here that I'm just going to dry brush quickly. And then we're going to take the more pinky color and kind of tone this into a little more pink. So see, it's like a little more pink. I'm going to go this direction by switching my color I have this interesting pinky base now I'm going to add a little water to this area just to smooth it out and maybe kind of go even lighter in another direction I have like a little hair there we go and that made like a smudge but not a big deal so now when my paint is more dry we're gonna want to do a little bit of scraping because I want to leave an imprint in the paper to represent these trees so um, what I like to do is just take any tool literally like any kind of scraping tool and it can be the back of your brush um, anything sharp I'm gonna look and see what I have here that's kind of random maybe just like a palette knife you might have a pin or like a little cutting tool something right because this is arches so you can beat this up and I'm literally going to take a little bit of my brown color so just get it wet dip it into the brown color and I don't want them big I just want them I just want some kind of scratched in
I'm even taking some of this pink because it's a good color. You see how little the marks are? I'm not going heavy. Mostly it's the marks that I want in the paper. Kind of just random. Okay, now we're going to take a detail brush and take some of that umber gray. And I'm going to strike some tree trunks just like that. So we've already got score in the paper scoring um, and that works on 100% cotton paper the best. So that's why I use the arches here because I've already scored in and then randomly not following the scoring lines. I'm just brushing in the appearance of trees like the tree, you know, like these little areas here. And then if you want to extend them up a little bit, like there's some little branches kind of going in different directions, then all you would do is just do some cross hatching. You don't have to get crazy with it. You don't have to be like, oh my gosh, I need everything to be perfect. If you have a bigger sheet of paper that you're working on, you can make it more perfect if you want, you know, but you can see I'm just kind of cross hatching out little lines. Okay. Meanwhile, everything's drying. So then we're going to look and see what we want the tone to be underneath the white. So I have this started. Um, so maybe I'll just kind of go in and give it another little layer of color. And maybe I'll add some of the shadowy color to it and get that going here. And I'm doing it with my detail brush here because I want it to be really random and rough. And this doesn't hold a ton of water, but I find that, you know, it holds enough, I think, to get it going. It's pretty, it's got a lot of movement, doesn't it? So again, if I want to use, uh, if I don't want to wait and see how it dries, we can kind of get a little more modeling effect going like that. Now let's take like this angular brush from the website. This is over at uh, jackswatercolor.com. And I'm going to start working in some of this buff color. It's this one is the um, blush color. And it's like, if you like buff titanium, it's kind of like that. And whether you do it with your finger or the end of a brush, we're just going to start seeing what we can get here. By putting very little flex at first of this on my paper. Little flex. And then some of areas we can actually use the corner to make more purposeful dots. See what I mean? And it's pink already. It's really pretty. So this would not show up if this bottom layer wasn't bright enough, right? So you, it kind of like the layer that you do underneath has to be more toned. So see how like much darker this was? It's actually darker than mine even. I went really light, but that's because I started out really light. So in the end, it'll be fine. Because it's mostly just a nice little effect that I'm getting here. Now areas where it's still a little bit wet, it just gets thicker. And we kind of want that, you know? So this titanium, this pink, 
I love it because it's not a stark white. It gives you that little like light kind of cherry blossom touch over a darker color. And I thought it would be great in this kit for that reason, because we can literally just have that extra beautiful pastel pinky color with the, the beauty of the titanium to give it a little more opaque kind of a gouache feel, but it's watercolor. You can actually go really nice and loose with it. So if I bring it up here, I notice that it gives it a really nice feel. Um, so if I want to add more, I can just kind of get my finger really wet and speckle a whole bunch of little, little bits. Now see this brush does a good job in getting really, really teeny weeny little speckles. So if you're working on a very small piece of paper, try and find something like this that gives you that really small little bits. You see how small it is? Let me show you. For a bigger piece of paper, then you wouldn't want that size, but see how that is now? It gave us all these tiny, tiny little ones. And then I touched the smudges in with the edge of the brush. So now this part is dry and we can start giving ourselves a front perspective because this is mostly like background stuff. You can get this sponge, by the way, this wiping sponge on jackswatercolor.com and also this palette and this um, brush holder. We have them right now. They're so handy. I love them. Okay, so that's clean. So I think you can use either one of these. Um, they're both great for it. This one obviously is going to hold more paint, but we're working on such a small area that if you just have one of the pointed rounds, that works too. So it doesn't matter. You can do it with either. So much like the other tutorial that I was doing, I'm just going to take some of the gray umber and I'm going to mix it in with the current color in my palette. Now I do this a lot because it kind of gives more of a cohesive look. Um, and I can always change it later, you know? So now I'm going to just very loosely start. This is that great pointed round. And then I can go a little thicker here. And I'm trying to change up like a little line, some dashes, some dots, and give it a nice little modeled effect. And then I go back to the color directly and feed it in just to a, a few of the areas. I like to do it in a, a very dry brushy way. You can do it however you like. Okay, now I'm going to take some of the colors. So let's just look and see, this is a very pinky color. And I'm going to drop it in for centers of flowers in little areas that I feel like makes sense to have a flower. And I can go back and forth between putting in um, the brighter pink and also touching some of our brownie pink as well. If I wanted to maybe think about how I'm going to draw some of these flowers. And if you notice, I'm drawing right over 
Let's take a little bit of the pink and just kind of create a very mottled big petal. Now I think in this kind of a thing, the idea is to keep some of the white space. So I'm using like a little bit of the cherry blossom color with the pink blossom color and keeping a lot of white space in between. Can you see that? So that one's just kind of like behind the branch and then we're going to go in front of the branch. Kind of like an upside down little heart really. And I can just use my finger to break up some of the color if it's just really too small. Now how dark you decide to go or how detailed you decide to go at this scale is entirely up to you. I'm kind of going my first layer just very, um, just kind of like that, very loose. Show you. Now obviously this one is a lot more detailed. I'm just starting out because my background is very like strong. I find it's, it's a little strong which tends to be part of my style. Um, that's how I'm making the decision about my cherry blossoms. I'm kind of playing with the color and the amount of paint I decide to put on there. And even looking at the size of them, I want the, the branch to look like it's really far forward. So I'm purposely doing them a lot larger than the sample. And then I'm just kind of smudging it with my finger. So remember in one of the previous videos we did, I showed you how to draw cherry blossoms and think about the circle they might be in. Don't forget that lesson. So because these are small, um, I'm kind of basing the cherry blossom based on that like three petal start, but then smudging it to make it very loose and soft looking. We can go back in and add the rest of the petals, but I'm just doing it so that I can get some nice quick little shapes that are a little more random and I find that the faster that I do it the more random I'm likely to be. This one's a little dark because it grabs some of the blue so I'm just going to erase it and then go back in with a little bit of the orange to counter I'm going to use some of the orange for some little added blossoms. I'm 
and again and small so I'm keeping it very rough and just kind of intuitive making it you understand what you're looking at you know and the idea isn't to get um, perfect form the idea is for you to translate what it is you're looking at so you know you're looking at a cherry blossom or you know um, beautiful layers of color you know just by doing that so it's it's almost like a print right because I'm like imprinting it with my finger I'm going back in and just giving you enough of a loose detail so that you know what you're looking at but you can kind of translate the rest yourself and I'm smudging it around so that you still do kind of register the shapes but it's loose enough where it's just interesting you know I find that like if you let the eye kind of help guide the viewer instead of giving it everything you know like I'm not giving you everything right I'm actually giving you the um, the dream of everything in the painting and I'm just taking my finger and smudging the ones that are still wet so that they just kind of blend out a bit Okay, see what I have so far so see how lovely and loose that is because I just kind of made it really random and then if I find that anything is just too heavy or maybe not modeled enough like this one it looks a little bit too blended so I'll just remove some of the color and see what I got I got that little bit of white and maybe we'll remove some of the color here just by wetting it with the brush and then drying it off with the towel see how I got that um, here I can play with it a little bit because you can always add it back in I like that I like these little shots of orange you know so like kind of get it on my brush and just tap in a few little punches of orange I love them. Actually, I want another one right there. Yeah, the little bits of orange kind of do it for me. Very, very loose. I'll put some here. Yeah, and that's it. I don't think I'm even going to need to go any further. I kind of really just like that. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful. Um, so this one had some birds in the background. You can even go in and add even more layers here now that this bottom is dry. So if you find that it's this is very soft the way it turned out, see how pretty it is. I actually like it the way it is because I like this coming forward and this kind of setting back. Um, so I'm going to leave it like this and just go ahead and sign it because I think it's beautiful. I'm very happy with it. So I'm going to take a mix of the paint colors that I already used and I need to get enough water on my brush. There's my version. So that's my loose version. So we just kind of used a variation of what was in my dirty palette and I just kept adding some of my watercolor, some of my honey made watercolor from the subscription into this and you can see it's actually there's some blue in there there's all kinds of stuff it wants to separate because some of the colors are heavier than the others but that's like lovely I can actually pour this onto a sheet of paper and just play with it and make it into something else. But I think it turned out really good. I love this. So take the challenge for yourself and go ahead and paint some more. Go back and look at these videos as well because I've already done these ones. I think you'll really, really enjoy 
painting through the subscription. I'm going to do more videos for you soon. Enjoy. Have a great time. If you haven't joined and you're interested in getting these lovely paints every month delivered with the challenge cards and the paper and everything so that you can maybe sit down with your friends and have a really great glass of wine and painting night and watching the videos, then go to jackswatercolor.com and sign up for the watercolor monthly subscription. I think you'll really love it. And we are just having such a good time. I get nothing but compliments about this subscription. And I'm really glad that you guys enjoy it. Happy painting.